Hello traders and welcome to another day trading strategy video of mine where we're going to be looking at another website that we can use data from to trade the markets on any kind of time frame. So this is data.bitcoinity.org and I found that this site is really helpful because it pulls together data from many exchanges and gives us many different kinds of indicators uh, that we can use with that data on Bitcoin to the dollar or Bitcoin to other currencies as well. So today we're going to be taking a look at three indicators that I've found very helpful on the site. And I'd also like to mention that on Thursday, I'm going to be running my first group mentoring session. It's going to be a private mentoring session for three people where we're going to be talking about triangular arbitrage and parity, uh, overvalued, undervalued arbitrage as well. So if you're interested in that, you can just uh, shoot an email over to the email below. All right, so let's start off with price plus volume. Let's go to the six hour on the minute. So this is the average price and the total volume across all exchanges, all exchanges being really all major exchanges with a few that I haven't really uh, heard of. You know, we, we, have, we have the big guns though, the, this guy, this one. And what I like to do with this, I found that when I'm just looking at the Bitfinex BTC USD uh, price volume, sometimes you miss out on certain price moves or certain volume moves that are very important and happening on every single exchange except your own. So that's why I like to look at this kind of average uh, or pooling together of a lot of data because we can see very clear volume spikes here. I mean, the volume spike here higher than normal and price uh, reversed. I mean, first volume spike about here. And then another volume spike, I think, about here-ish too. Volume spike here, price consolidated, then reversed. Volume spike here, as you can see, the highest one, second highest one on our chart, uh, price went up. You know, volume spike for reversals is a, is a, a good strategy to, to trade. Uh, and, and this really does allow one to, to look at that. And you can go on, you know, like the 30-day, you can look at some more detailed things here. To, to trade as well. Now let's take a look at the combined order book. So you can get some help by just clicking this, but what we have here, I think I just like zoomed in or zoomed out a lot or something, but I like to zoom in to here. Yeah, this is perfect. And then I also like to look at the order sum in BTC required to move price. And one cool thing that you can do with this site is I can hover over Bitfinex you can see like that. I can I can hover over BitMEX and we can see more offers than bids. You can go over to Coinbase Pro and see that they're about equal. Not surprising though, because it's you know, Coinbase Pro. Uh, and then here it's about equal as well. So I do call asks offers. They're, they're, they're the same thing. It's just I saying asks is kind of a tongue twister. So that's why I say offers. For some traders who may not understand uh, an offer, Offer is just a limit order to sell. A bid is just a limit order to buy. But yeah, so this is a tool that I like to look at to just try to find uh, order book strength. You know, 500 Bitcoin across major exchanges here versus like 200 Bitcoin for the same amount of price difference both ways. So now for the creme de la creme, I mean, really the third indicator. This is the indicator that I use 95% of the time. I'd say I only use this about like total like 5% of the time, the bid ask some, bid offer some in, in my lingo. And what this is gonna show us is the order book over time. Bid ask some within 1% range from the price. What this means is that 1% upward, all of those asks, all of those offers, those Bitcoin in USD value added together. So 1% upward of all of those offers added to a cumulative value that is graphed on a line like this. We can see it was 7.9 here, you know, it was 6.7 here and, and so on. And then we have bids. So 1% below price uh, with all those limit buy orders, those bids, those are all added together and graphed on a line as well. So there are two major ways that we want to interpret the bids and the asks, the bids and the offers. And the first way is just the difference between the two. So when we see that, for example, one, let me go to my, my favorite sum within price range has always been 50%. That's the entire order book. 50% upward offers, 50% downward in, in all the bids. That, that, that is 100% of the order book. And I found that this data has been very, very helpful. 
when we look at this here, really what we're interested in is the, the difference between the two. So you can see there's many more bids here than there are offers and price went up. Many more offers than bids and price went down. Um, but more importantly is not just the, the number and, and the difference, but the change in bids, the change in offers relative to the change in price. So here's what I mean by that, by that second, that second one here. I see flat price, I see flat offers kind of just declining from 58 million down to 53. However, I'm seeing bids going from about 50 million all the way up to 60, uh, like 61.8 million. So about a 22, 24% increase in bids throughout this consolidation from its low to high. Uh, and I mean, just really not much of a slight, of a slight decrease in, in offers. And this kind of order book movement does show me that we're, we're, we are positioning ourselves for, for an up move, especially when price is moving flat. Um, that, that can be a sign. And then what we see here is actually that price goes up, uh, but then we see more offers emerging than bids, as you can see up, up here. So the reason that I say, the reason why I say this is a little bit surprising in, in what this means is whenever we look at any kind of indicator, there's what usually happens, then there's what, uh, then there's something known as divergence when what's supposed to happen isn't happening and, and, and another thing is actually happening instead. So that's what we're interested in, in looking at the bid and ask sum. When price moves up, what do we expect the order book to do? Well, if price is moving up on high momentum and, and naturally high volatility, then I'm expecting bids to increase. I'm expecting that the bid rate is going to just continue to increase because more potential buyers trying to buy into the uptrend. I'm expecting offers to decline for two reasons. First, orders getting executed on the offer as price barrels upward, we're filling those offers which is gonna decline them. Second, um, if you're trying to offer, you know, at like uh, 6.3K and you see prices going up here, some people just like to cancel their order and just sell at a better price. So you could, you know, just sell a little bit higher and be fine. So canceling of orders is also gonna decline that, that offer rate, but we don't see that here. What I see is an increase in price, an increase in offers and nothing happening to the bids. This is telling me two things, one, I'm seeing not many potential buyers really interested in this trend. That could tell me that there are many, there are there are already many position buyers who have already bought in. So we may be running out of steam for this uptrend in the short term. Now, what I also see too is I'm seeing many potential sellers trying to get into this trend, trying to um, trying to exit the market, and that's what's going to push price down. And then what we see here. Well, here I see actually a drop from 68 down to about 59 in the offers as price went down. Usually I'd expect the offers would go up if, if price went down, more people trying to sell. Uh, but we don't see that. We see everyone who wanted to sell has likely done so and not much interest to sell. And then we begin to see the interest to buy actually higher than the interest to sell. So demand is higher than supply here. And price goes up, price goes up until we go from 69 million uh, offers. After this massive increase in price, we go to 83 million offers. Uh, so a lot of people trying to, to sell Bitcoin. And naturally, just price has a hard time going higher. Yes, bids do increase. And that is completely normal and natural for a, um, for, for a price increase. But the offers increased at a much higher rate than the bids did. And that's not healthy. That, that's a no-no. And then what we see here is price goes down, but the offers go down here as well. Bids are flat. So, I mean, I would expect more potential sellers trying to sell into this trend, but again, it seems like interest to sell has just kind of evaporated just at the point that price stops going down. If this begins to move upward, if this red line begins to move upward, more supplies entering the market, I'm expecting price to go down. If this begins to move upward, I'm expecting price to go up, you know, as we kind of potentially just do what we're doing here. And if I look at the, uh, and just to show you guys quickly, I like to use the 50% because it's the entire order book. I, I like it. Some people really, really like the 5%. The 5% data can be helpful, um, as you can see here as well. I mean, it, it, you can see just how many bids that were at 5% within price to offers, and then offers overtook the bids, and then bids overtook the offers, and price went up, price went up, price went up, until the offers overtook the bids here and then price went down. 
uh, but bids actually were going up here while offers were kind of going down then flat. Yeah, you can look at the 5%, that that, that does work. Uh, and you know, if you look at the seven day 5%, this one is pretty helpful too. We can see many more offers than, than bids and, and, and price does go down. Many more bids here than offers and price goes up. And then again, many more bids here, a lot of more bids coming in than offers and, and, and price goes up here. And now we're just be seeing 15 million up to about a doubling of the bids. Seems like we're getting a lot of bids coming in near to off net, uh, relative to offers at only about 12 within 5% of, of price range. I just, I, I just like the, I just like the 50% a lot more, uh, even though it's kind of glitchy or doing something weird here. I, I like to see the entire order book, but um, you know, you can look at all of these, but I would say the 5% is really nice too. So let's take a look at more of a scalper mindset of a short term look with the 50% sum. And that's really here that you can see it. We have more bids than offers here. Price went up. We have more offers here, 69 to 67. Uh, more, more offers here than bids and price did this. Then we see these bids coming up to play and price just goes up. But then we see all of these offers coming in as price is going up. Yeah, bids are, bids are coming in. Bids are coming in as price is going up, which is good. But many more offers are coming in than bids, which is no bueno. So price uh, has a harder time going higher and then stabilizes, then goes down. We can see bids and offers both dropped off around here. Price went back up and then went back down. I'd say reason it went back down is still, they're just, there's a larger spread. I mean, there's still more offers here than there are bids. There's still more potential sellers here than there are potential buyers. So price just continued to go down until reaching equilibrium. And here we get a bit of choppiness. where We get a bit of a bounce in the price as the bids begin to get a little bit strong. But that kind of evaporates uh, as as price goes as price continues to move down here. And then the bids go up a little bit. We get a little bit of hope. And price just kind of chills here, and then bids fall apart. Uh, I can show you guys that the bids falling apart. The bids fall from here, those bids down to here, and just a lot of people giving up on trying to buy or just getting their buy orders filled too. Uh, but offers, I'm talking about the end of this uptrend here, the offers give up too. And that led to this sh this period of consolidation where we get bids higher than offers. And I'm expecting price is going to have an easier time moving up if this sustains. We can keep these bids strong and offers weak then. Yeah. So we don't want to just look at Bitfinex. I will never just look at Bitfinex and make a decision. I always want to look at at least two exchanges. And the two ones that I'm picking today are Bitfinex and Bitnex. I found that those two have the best information with limit orders. I would say avoid Coinbase if you're, if you're trying to re read this kind of data because Coinbase bid ask sum is gonna be kind of weird because of the fact that uh, when you use a limit order on Coinbase Pro, you don't pay any fees. Which can make things a little bit different. S similar situation on BitMEX with the rebate with limit orders, but I've still f I have still found that BitMEX limit order data has been, uh, has been pretty clean. So let's go take a look at that on the three day. Yeah, just a similar story here. Uh, more more bids coming in than offers and price goes up. And then we see a crossover here. And then we see offers here, price goes down. Price doesn't really do much here, goes up. And then we begin to see superiority of offers over bids. Potentially the 5% may be a little bit more clear. Yeah, I think it is here. Especially when the bids just kind of gave up from 123 million bids down to 35.7, just showing that People who wanted to buy already bought in. I mean, they, they, their buying interest has already been tapped into. No more interested buyers here in BitMEX. A lot of interested sellers here and psh, price goes down. Uh, and then we see some interested sellers come in and price goes down. Those interested sellers kind of just give up. And we begin to see these buyers, you know, beginning to be a little bit more interested. But I'm seeing price going up with the offers going up, not really healthy and price isn't able to do this any longer, and then we get this. Uh, so the five and the 50 do come in really handy here. If we look at the, ooh, that's, an, that's an ugly six hour chart, if I do say so. Um, if we do look here, we can see offers higher than bids here. You know, Price does go down here. Offers still higher than bids, price continues to go down. Finally, we've gotten some crossover. We're getting more bids coming into the market than offers, and the 5% looks pretty, I think, pretty clear as well. 
with the offer uh, superiority here, and then just giving up of basically all the offers and the bids kind of just remaining chill and flat here. So yeah, I would just recommend taking a look at Bitfinex and Bitmex. If you hit all exchanges, it just goes to Bit Bitfinex. You'll see. Yep. Uh, I mean, this data has been very helpful uh, in comparing it back to sentiment. So this is just a tool you can use the bid ask sum um, to try to make some educated trading decisions in the market. If you have any more questions or comments about interpretation of this data, you know you can uh, you can you can leave a comment below on YouTube or you could also shoot me an email or just contact me on my Discord chat that I have linked below. But with that, happy trading.